Right guys, today we are going to talk about World's Strongest Man, how it went and our thoughts about it, well my thoughts about it, the comp, the events, etc, etc. You can see the good news at least, you know, I'm not going to say much about it, but I'm sitting here with two f golden trophies, quite nice aren't they? I photoshopped it to make them look like they have two, so anyway, Simon did a very good job of that. World's Strongest Man was started on the Tuesday, we were competing Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, off Friday, uh, final Saturday, Sunday. We didn't find out our groups until we got out there um, and everyone was doing the same events in the qualifier which was our first time as well so everyone was on the same boat. The groups came in you know I obviously the top seed so when you're top seed you don't ever get in a group with a second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth seed because that's silly and that's not how it goes but I still had Fairs, Ivars, uh, the American guy, the older American guy and then the new Canadian that one kind of the strongest man so these guys you know, they're not they're not a walk in the park fairs is everybody knows who fairs is, everybody knows who Ivars are, so I've had battled these guys before, so yeah. That was all good. I mean qualifying events were very kinda straightforward ones. Um and I just I just, I just wanted to go into the qualifiers, just chilled out, not using any unnecessary energy and not to show too much emotion. Even for like, you know, doing a wee yell or come on or best in the world or whatever you say, it's good. It can still drain you, you know, if you get too pumped up and stuff so I didn't really take too much pre-workout either it was just kind of I just kind of treated the qualifiers as a gym day event day for myself um, and try to you know not make mistakes and just get kind of through to the final unscathed like I said obviously you know it went very well for myself I ended up winning my group all I had to do on the Thursday was go up to the cannonball grip thing and lift that for a second or two and then put it down and then I had an extra rest day rest so I had, 20, I had 48 hours rest Usually, the last two years, I've only had 24 hours rest because I've been doing the stone-off. So it was nice not to do the stone-off for once. And you can see how competitive lots of the groups were. But that was my goal, was to get through to the final unscathed. Yeah, so I did that and stuff, yeah. So before I get on to the final and other things, we're going to talk about each event into the qualifier. The first day, first event in the qualifiers was the loading event, which was five implements. I think it was an anvil, keg, two sandbags, and a stone. Yeah, that was it. So, yeah. A stone was first, but I got, maybe got it wrong, wrong way wrong. But anyway, that's that was it. So yeah, again, this is a simple event. Uh, we all knew there wasn't going to be anything odd about this one. Uh, we've done anvils the last few years. Keg sandbags are easy. Stones easy as well. So yeah, I know my group was fast. Fairs and Ivars are very very well known loading for like being fast on loading and really fast with their feet and stuff. So they, they drew me out with fairs the last two. So yeah, so I could. Uh, see what everybody had done so all I needed to do was you know win that at first event and get my nerves down and get slowly into the competition I done that and I won my group by three or four seconds so that was a good start for myself like I said got into the competition then nerves went away and was able to kind of get into my stride a bit more so the second event of the day was the deadlift ladder this was 300 to 380 five bars and obviously it's in the name of quick, quick as you can I was the first group at Holy crap, I just opted to go in socks and it was like playing hot potato. I think that's how I did it quite fast and all them because I wanted to get off that arena as fast as I could. I, was, I won my group as well, nobody else got 380, but I went straight into the cold tub with my feet because they were burning alive. Um, very, very hot. Again, that was a nice, another, you know, I expected to win that because I was I'm one of the best deadlifters at world. So, again, but all I could think about was my feet burning. That was really, really intense pain, that. But yeah, I did it and that was the main thing. Day two was car walk and log press for reps. So car walk, again, this is kind of, I've done this a few times. I wasn't very good at it in Glasgow last year is where I ended up coming second to Evan on it because I hyperextended my leg. So this year I just wanted to get 15 seconds or under because at Glasgow I got 16. My goal, like I said, was just to get under 15. I ended up getting 14 seconds, won the group again by like uh, two or three seconds. So I was very proud of that because, yeah, and it means I'm still good at moving and, you know, car walk was no issue for myself. So it was very nice to get under the car again and, you know, get get moving with that. This is my last big event in the qualifiers, basically. So if I basically had won this event, uh, all I had to do was go out on the final day of the qualifiers and just pick up the cannonball grip thing. So reps for me to beat were eight, uh, which was very good reps in our group. So I think it was seven or eight anyway. Uh, and that was by Fairs, I think. So he kind of set a really good um, benchmark for me to kind of go out and hit. And my goal of this was just to go out as quick as I can, do eight, and then, and then see where... The Canadian was who was who I was up against and you know, I bashed out eight and I think 50 55 seconds had like 30 seconds left and I didn't have to do any more so you know, I was very pleased with that my pressing even if it was one four five my conditioning was still there and I was very kind of pleased with my performance 
that meant I had won all four of my uh, events, but I was still needing to go out on the final day, like I said, and did uh, <coughs> and pick up the cannonball for grip. So that's what I did. You know, I only needed to do two or three settings, picked it up, made sure I was getting counted, made sure I did the three seconds and dropped it, and then I could just chill out then for the you know the rest of the day, and then chill out on a Friday and get myself sorted for the final. At this stage, I'd reached the final, and I think a lot of people. When they see it on TV and you know, they see my mindset and stuff. In the qualifiers, I was, like I said, more chilled. Didn't want to show any emotions. Just try to keep as much energy as I could and get through the qualifiers the easiest way I could. My goal was to make sure that on Saturday when I woke up for the final, I was feeling 100%. And I think I did that. You know, having Nathan there was really, really helpful. He was doing my blood, glucose levels, making sure I was topped up. Dan as well, making sure everything was right. Sinead, making sure everything was right as well. So having those people there... And having no stress on myself made everything so much easier. And then on Saturday was really when I switched my mindset to like, right, I'm in the final now. This is where the work comes. I don't think people realise that the final event for me, I had never, ever come out the top, bottom two in a car deadlift before. And I've never come out the bottom two or bottom three in a trap pool before. So these two events were my two bogey events. Every other time I've done them, I've never ever been able to even complete a trap pull, I don't think, or have completed it, but like I said, second, third, last, same with a car deadlift, so these events were the ones, those two events were the ones I was kind of nervous about, but anyway, yeah, so the final was came upon me and I wanted to get my mindset into that kind of, right, let's get aggressive now, let's turn it on, I'm in the final. As I said, the final had four four champions in it, you know, before, Martins, Brian Shaw, Novikov and myself, that's never been seen before. You know, if you win this world strongest man, you you you're, you're not you are the world strongest because the best guys are here. So anyway, the first event of the final was the knack medley, which is two knack uh, toolboxes into a yoke, and I was paired up against Mitchell in this one. I was very pleased with this because Mitchell was like a uh, really really fast at loading in his group in his qualifier, and he was really he was known for moving and stuff. So I kind of just wanted to you know as long as I keep pace with him uh, or beat him. It would be a very good result for me. I ended up, you know, coming second in the first event in the final, and I was in a very good place then as well. See what the rest of the kind of days would bring. So that was a good start for myself. And then second event was the car deadlift for reps. I think it was about 350, 360. A lot of people got a lot more reps than I thought. You know, I think um, obviously Mitch was good at deadlifting, just a wee bit of his technique. He may have got more. Trey got a lot. You know, I mean, like I said, even me, I shot my thing. I got joint second or something in that, and. My deadlift's improving and improving. I'm glad I was able to, you know, hit some big numbers on the car deadlift and, you know, just keep myself up there as well. Uh, Novikov had won that event, so he was already into maybe like a one and a half point leader setting after the first day. But, you know, I knew what I kind of had to do. You know, the first two events off the, quali off the final, I had placed top three in both of them, which is, you know, you can't ask for a better start than that anyway. Oh yeah, the last event of the first day was the Flintstone lift. I think this is my most exciting lift that I can't wait to watch. Um... And again, I was so shocked at how many people were hitting 218, 220, etc., etc. Um, and this one came down to myself and Novikov. Martins failed the 235, so I was kind of then, after 235, he thought I had to hit that to make sure that I was guaranteed second place. But I couldn't afford to miss the lift because I'd be joint then with Martins and I couldn't afford to let Novikov you know, race off in front of me. So ended up hitting 240, then called it there, and Novikov went on one at 246. Right call for myself, you know, I'm was playing the long game, being smart and being a professional about it all. You know, I didn't want to just go out and keep hitting numbers, which wouldn't have benefited me anything. I think even if I won that, I'd only got an extra half a point or something anyway. So, uh, yeah, the long game was my kind of most important goal. So the first three events of that day, I was top two, I think, in all three of them, like I said. So, you know, that was a very good place to be in at, at the final. Never, not out the top three at all. Novikov, I made, I think, a two-point leader setting went into the next day yeah so uh, yeah, so the first event in the last day of the final was the bass pool and like i said this was the one i was kind of very anxious with you know um never really come out the top bottom three in a bass pool before it was just all about technique for myself i used to be all wobbly i used to not be able to like get past a, when i lapped the ass kick and didn't know how to do all that but in training was i really focused on technique more than distance and stuff and it paid off you know i ended up i think coming second or third maybe i can't remember 44 seconds anyway and i was so buzzing with that because you know for you know for Novikov won it Novikov won it but he got exhausted he was on oxygen he was bleeding on nose you know he was really kind of exhausted after that which may have been the key 
and the change of you know him dropping a few points here and there. But yeah, I was so buzzing with that. You know, first event of the first day, top three again. What more could you want? Consistency was really showing for myself. And then, you know, the fifth event off the final was the power stairs, the rain power stairs. And this is where it got really interesting, you know. This is where I thought a lot more people would finish the power stairs. Uh, you know, when I've seen people training it and I've seen what it was like at Europe's Strongest Man, I thought with the three, with only the three implements and the three steps, I thought it was going to be a much easier lift than what we had been doing in training and what we had been doing at, uh, they had been doing at Europe's. Um, but that wasn't the case. The only people that finished it was Maxine and myself. And, you know, the likes of Brian Shaw not finishing that and a few others, I was a bit shocked. Um, but all in all, it paid very good for myself. You know, Maxine obviously won the event. I came second. Novikov, I think, dropped to seventh place by then. You know, that he was like a two and a half point, three point lead by then. And that's then when it came, you know, Clipper back, I mean, like he would have got three points out of that. He would have got seven points, you know, so, or eight points, whatever it was. So, yeah, that's when then I got told right, I was a point and a half in the lead going into the last event and you know anything can happen in strongman and I always say when I'm doing worlds or other competitions that I concentrate on myself I never ever give up and because I know that somebody is going to make a mistake and you know that's what happened we were going into the last event at the stones 1.5 points clear and it was reminded me like it was last year with Brian Shaw for me for there's a lot more pressure on me this year because one I knew Novikov was you know in it for the win, like he was psyched up. He only had made one mistake in the in the power stairs, so I thought, right, he's going to come in here, guns blazing. Two, I let Dan pick my tacky for me, which I've never done in my life. So I would, you know, I put all my kind of faith in him, and we were trying to get the tacky sorted. It wasn't working at first. I was like, oh, we may have just got the wrong tacky. But then it started, you know, going on my hands, and it was fine. And then three, I just kept overthinking. If I drop the first stone, don't drop the first stone. Don't drop the first stone. Went out there. And it went better than I could ever imagine. No, 25 seconds, winning the Atlas Stones. Gutted for Novikov to come last in the Stones. I really think he might have just gassed himself out after the trap pull. Uh, or maybe, you know, or the power stairs or something. But don't know what happened. He ended up coming third overall. Martin second, myself first. So, ended up winning by like 10 and a half points. So, yeah. Well, World Stars, man, it's such a brutal event. that like, You don't need to win every single event to, you know, win the competition. Uh, you need to just be in the top three in every single event. And you've got... A 70, 80, 90 percent chance of uh, winning it, winning it, and that's you know exactly what I did. Came back here with these, this and another shiny trophy, and you know felt very good for it all. And you know, my, all my hard work in the gym had paid off, and back to back champion I was here. So sorry guys that we could obviously show you everything at World Stars, man. You know we can't obviously do that, but you know if you want to go and look, if you missed missed some footage of World Stars, man, go look at our YouTube channel. Simon did like day one, day two, day three, etc. Out there, so you can go and see some banter we had with the athletes, our hotel rooms, just, you know, how our mindset was the night before, etc., etc., what we ate 24 hours before the competitions. I'm not going to go all over that because it's all on YouTube. We'll do another one closer to Christmas time again, how we felt with it all, how busy we've got, etc., etc. But yeah, like I said, you know, I beat the best field there and obviously deserved the title and I felt very, very happy and that I was able to take it back home, do it in front of some family members and a you know, now I'm going to enjoy it for a wee while. Also, I've got Soccer Aid coming up as well, so hopefully you guys will be watching that. But yeah, thank you for the support. Stay safe, man, stay spicy, and let's get us to 500k subs.